Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Book University, Professor Bell. I just got finished reading Pathfinder, Worldscape number one. Now, this is a new release, and there have been several Pathfinder comics before that, and some of them actually look pretty good. Just one of those situations that between budget and, oh well, yeah, mostly budget, um, too many comics to read, and not enough money to go around. <laughs> Either way, uh, this one, you know, another part one came out, another issue one, so I figured, you know what, let's give it a shot. You know, it can't hurt. So, bang. Got this, and wow. This is actually pretty good. I'm going to break it down like this. They've got several characters. Kira, uh, Sione, Saren Ray, Maris, Ciel, and Valoros. The only one you need to really remember is Valoros, because he's the only one who's really in this comic for the most part. Yeah, they're fighting a Thelgrun. Now, I don't know if Thelgrun is the name of the monster, or the name of the monster's species. It's just, it's a freaky kind of thing. Apparently it can read their minds, knows the spells they're going to use, and counter it somehow, and yeah, I don't think that the monster is the one that actually did this, but they seem to transport off to a worldscape. Uh, this seems to be a place where a whole bunch of different people from all over the place wind up going. Straight off the bat, I'm a pretty avid role player, but the games that I play are fairly limited. Dungeons and Dragons, boom. For the, I haven't really played third edition very much, but I have gone nuts when it comes to playing the previous and post uh, editions. And yet, I stand that I have never played Pathfinder before. Now, I've heard varying accounts of it that it's just a rip-off of Dungeons & Dragons, even though it's technically owned by the same company. Whatever, it's got a big enough following that rip-off or nay. The fact is that people really do like this game. They like it enough that they're putting out a lot more Pathfinder comics than they are Dungeons & Dragons comics. So, there's something to be said for that. It'd be like calling Warhammer Fantasy a rip-off, or, God forbid, World of Warcraft a rip-off. Who say that ten years ago, they could rip off your neck. Just saying. So, Valoros wakes up alone. Well, at least without his companions. In actuality, there are these three people trying to rob him. They're not doing a very great job of it. They're discussing everything. One guy's standing there giving directions and nobody's really listening to him. Uh, the guy's telling him, just take his stuff and slit his throat. Let's go. There's a monster coming. And you can actually hear this ah thing of a monster coming through the woods. And they're rushing. They're not rushing. They're having a conversation. They're really just a bunch of jackasses. And it's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Of course, Valoros wakes up and kills them. It's pretty cool the way he kills them, too. He does a great job. You know, like, it's not just a quick little slice dice, whatever. Um, he actually loses his sword a couple of times. Starts off without it. Uh, and has to sneak attack the first guy. And the other two guys that he doesn't get a jump on. It actually looked like, you know, real combat. Dungeons and Dragons-wise, at the very least. It was good. I liked it. It was actually the most interesting part of the comic. So, those three guys dispatched, a giant ape with four arms comes barreling out of the woods, and Valorous gets a good chop in it. Later on, it's surmised that it would have died from that good cut in its side, but in the meantime, it's big enough, it throttles him and picks him up and starts choking him out, and he's about to go unconscious. He does go unconscious. I don't know, something to that effect. Anyway, these things come along, and it's kind of like a Planet Hulk scenario, where they scoop him up and say, okay, cool, man, we're going to bring him to the arena. Yeah! About three, four days later, he's in the arena, and he's winning, he's, he's beaten pretty much everybody, there's only two people left he's got to fight, but the people aren't very happy with him, because he refuses to kill. Kind of. He's killing the scumbags, and the robbers, and the, the bad people, but some of the people are just like him, and they're actually nice people, and they're just forced to fight in the arena, and he refuses to kill them. So, you know, he's a pretty good judge of character when it comes to killing them, I suppose. Well, this girl named Fa is one of the prisoners there, one of the combatants, and she claims to have been the former ruler of this area until the queen and her retinue came and took over. Side note, you know, I used to play Dungeons & Dragons, the online role-playing game, and I had a character named Fa, uh, Warforged. And, yeah, his name was Fa. That was only his first name. His second name was Q, literally, the letter Q. And I want you to say the first name and last name together and understand why my name was banned. Anyway, she tells him that he's being soft and that's not what they like. And they need somebody to 
be able to actually do whatever they want them to do, kill them. Otherwise, the winner is not going to be considered as the trusted lieutenant of the queen and emperor, whatever the heck they are. Does he listen? No, of course not. Because when these two go at it with each other, well, he winds up sparing her, yeah, which means he, he wipes the floor with her. Uh, the last combatant comes out and get this, it's Red Sonia. Yeah, go figure. Red Sonia comes running out, charges right into him. But instead of just killing him, even though she's threatening him, she's telling him this, that, and the other thing, and all these different events that are happening that led to what's going on. She's been there for the past four months or so. She's actually from Hyporia. Now, I heard them, or I read them say something about Hyporia before, and I did think, Conan? Really? Conan? But uh, now they actually said Cimarron. Uh, Cimarronian, and it's like, okay, yeah, without a doubt, that's absolutely what they're talking about. So they actually advertised Red Sonia on the front. They also read, um, advertised John Carter and Tarzan. So very cool. But I didn't actually see them in this. If I did, then they weren't named or anything to that effect. But clearly they're going to be showing up pretty soon. So that's cool. I also saw some other characters that could be someone else, which would be actually very interesting. More on that when I read part two, because I will be reading part two of this. Uh, this was actually pretty good. It ends with um, Valoris turning around and seeing one of his friends, one of his companions up by the queen. But uh, Sonya takes advantage of that momentary lapse of judgment, plants a knee right in his gut. That's pretty much where the comic ends. Full of action, not much of an explanation of why this, that, and the other thing, but in reality it's kind of like a Ravenloft situation or a Planescape. It's cool that this stuff is happening, we know that it's happening, we don't know why it's happening. We may never know why it's happening. Do we really need a reason why? Maybe if there's a way to stop it, but why would you want to stop such an awesome plot? Anyway, whatever they're going to do with it, I think that they're in pretty good hands. I really can't wait to see more. I want to see what Tarzan does, you know, showing up in this. He's a kind of character who you you could really like, you know? It depends on if they're going to give him a good enough story, but hey man, they made Kazar after him, right? So anyways, guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.